Hello, and today we are talking all things Master EQ. What's Master EQ? Well, it's a very good question. EQ refers to effectively bass and treble controls, the sound, the overall brightness or warmth of a tone of an instrument. And um, the Genos has, as men do many other keyboards as well, the Genos has something called Master EQ. How do you find it? Okay, on the main screen of the instrument, the bottom, press Mixer, then choose EQ, and on the far top right-hand corner, you'll see a word that says Master. If you highlight that, okay, and then go to EQ, here is your Master EQ setting. Okay, now the instrument already comes with presets. If you tap where it says Bright, in my case, I've got Flat, Mellow, Loudness, Powerful, User 1 and User 2. Now these settings will help you at home, depending on what speaker setting you have. If you've got a pair of, for example, the um, Genos satellite speakers that come with Genos, then you can adjust the sound to suit those speakers. However, if you've got a pair of Yamaha HS8s, the studio monitor speakers, this will also help as well. And even if you're putting it through a stage PA, this will give you more control over the sound. Okay, so if I click close here on the screen, you can see here now we've effectively got lots of fake little dials. Okay, and we've got frequencies starting from 100, 100 hertz through to 7 hertz. This is, the, this is the, the preset. Okay, now as you can see on the bottom row where it says gain, the higher the number in terms of, well, I'll say the lower the number in this case, if we've got 100, 250, 500, those refer to the, the base frequencies. And as they go through and go to the lower numbers, which is 1, 4, 7, that will change the brightness of the tone. So if I just, as you can hear, this one here, I go from quite muffly, la, 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 and there's much more detail in the tone now because I've actually got the highest frequencies, the, the bright parts of my voice are being adjusted. So by turning the dial, in fact, let me just show you here, look. You turn the dial here, that will change the dial on the screen. You tap the screen and then change the dial. You see, that's given me a completely and utterly different tone. It's very, it's not pleasant at all. So I'm going to put that back to about three, and I'm going to turn my, the very end, um, the seven kilohertz, back up to about six. Okay, so you can hear the tone of my voice is mellow and bright. If I wanted to go even more mellow, I would go to the far left-hand side of the screen, okay, and I would adjust the, the frequencies that are around 100 and 250. So 100, if I turn that, you can hear my voice goes very boomy. Um, and again, if I change the 250, that starts to make me sound like I'm a... <laughs> Sounds like an auctioneer's. Um, I turn that down, turn that down, and turn the gain down on the bass too much as well. Now that's actually uh, because obviously I've got my microphone plugged into the keyboard. That's affecting the, the the microphone. But the key thing here is it will actually change the sound of the of the the whole instrument. Okay, so if I go to say for example variation C. Just turn that down a little bit. If I increase the gain on the lower frequency, the 100, hear what happens? Back it right off, it goes very, very, very tinny, very thin. So these are controls that you have to adjust the tone to your taste. Now, I always used to... <coughs> excuse me a moment, I'm just choking. Um, but I'm just going to... A quick little drink. Bear with me a second. Ah, that's better. Right, okay. So I would normally say, um, with regards to the EQ, on previous models, we've had a um, sort of a slider effect. So you could actually create a little smiley face on the screen. 
But the more I've told people about the setting I use, the more people start to uh, bitch and moan about it. So I'm not I'm not going to even give, give you a setting because this is personal taste. This is this doesn't have a well, it does have a right and a wrong because if I was to set my um, low gain all the way that way and then my high gain all the way that way, then it sounds terrible. So what I'm going to say to you is. To connect your speakers, start to play, start the rhythm. But while the rhythm is playing, adjust the control, the bottom control. Okay, the gain level. Now again, if I'm, see what happens? Oh dear turn that back and I suddenly lose all the definition in my tone. So my rule of thumb is to adjust the two high, well probably two or third, second or third. So you've got one, two, three, so you've got 1.6 kilohertz, four kilohertz and seven kilohertz. And then adjust the gain on those to the sound that you like. Now I've, I think as I'm getting older, my ears, my, my hearing is changing because the higher frequencies I always tend to boost. So as I get this sort of sparkle and brightness in the sound. And to be fair, I actually get a lot of comments saying, this sounds awesome, what have you done? And I haven't really done much. All, all I've done is just increase the higher, level, higher frequency gain. So for me, that's too, too much. But about eight or nine... To my hearing, I like this. It's got a sparkle to it. The sec second frequency down, 4 hertz. Now that, uh, yeah, again, just a little bit extra. So I'm going to go 3 on that one. And then on 1.6 kilohertz, we've got this sort of, we can go higher, which makes me sound a bit more... Um, Ten pound, twenty pound, thirty pound, forty pound. It's very auctioneer sound, isn't it? Um, so if I back that off to about three, I still keep the detail in the sound and the warmth. Uh, and again, if I come out of there and pick a different rhythm, I, I, I always generally set this sort of thing with a ballad um, because it gives you some sort of strength. Yeah, it's good pop evergreen. So if I go to variation four, go back into my mixer, and go to my lowest part of the gain, so for me, I like that. So now what I will do is where it's got the little picture of the um, arrow and the icon. and the, So basically, top right-hand corner of the screen where you've got the X, the little picture below with the arrow of the hard drive, press it, and then I'm going to save it into user 1. Okay. And I can actually name it, and I can put fave, fave, there we go. And that's now my, my master EQ for the whole instrument. And again, if I put a full piano on. Maybe I want a bit more warmth. Now, bear in mind, this isn't setting the EQ for my piano. This is setting the overall tone. I'm going to leave it there because the, the one I've set up as favorite is my, my ideal sound. Okay. So now I'm going to come out of there and I'm going to go into mixer again and I'm going to go to panel EQ. Now this is my EQ just for the piano. So if I do want to make it warmer and brighter,
Yeah. So, as I showed you in the previous video, Filter also then can add more detail to the piano. Okay. So my master EQ, so remember to get to the EQ, all you do is on the screen, go to EQ, and then top right hand side, master, and you've got an eight band EQ control. Okay. And that's my setting, my, my fave. And to be fair, if I go to my mallow, well, these are the presets. The mallow is, is very flat. Bright is brighter without adding too much in the middle. Loudness is just sort of like a boost. Powerful emphasizes those really middle frequencies, which I don't like. It, it's too, it's too, oh, it's just horrid. Um, <laughs> and then I've got my favorite, which is warm. Now, I started off this conversation saying there is no right or wrong to this because there isn't. This is down to your ears. If you are playing with the two speakers at the front of the instrument, okay, so maybe you've got the two speakers here, the sound that you're going to adjust is to your personal taste. You aren't setting this to, um, to any sort of professional standard. You are creating the sound to fit and match in with the sound that you like, okay. So if anybody is going to leave a comment below, just don't bother because <laughs> there is no point. This is personal preference and it depends on the speakers, the size of the room, where you position the instrument. It, it's very, it's, it's unique to where you are playing. If you're sat in, the, in a, a cupboard, <laughs> the six foot square um, with two speakers, you're going to have a very much different setting to if you were sat in a big large lounge room uh, or, or a kitchen or, or dining room, it's always going to be different. And you cannot, cannot, cannot say that this setting is for everybody because it's not. It really isn't. And the thing I've learned over the years of people whinging about this is, oh, well, you've set this and it's not the way I thought it should be. No, it isn't. And before you even kick off, I don't care. It, it's these are your settings and this I'm showing you here because this will make a difference to you your instrument and the sound in your room not to everybody with the same brush okay so this the, although this is a, a tutorial showing you the setting I've got because I mean my setup is connected to a computer and I'm running it through a, a pair of good quality headphones so I can hear pretty much all the detail in the sound if you're in a, I don't know, maybe you're in the garage and you've got traffic going past, you're going to have more detail to, that you're needing to pull out. So you'll have different settings. The whole thing around this basically is you'll have different settings. Um, but this is how you get to it. And a lot of people gloss over this, never actually touch it. It's not even turned on some people. They just literally have it all set to zero factory. But this will make a world of difference to the sound of your Genos. And any other keyboard, to be fair, that has uh, EQ settings. I know the Korg has Max EQ and various other sort of functions, which are very, very clever. And you can go in and you can change those to make the sound fit whatever speaker system you're using and to fit the room that you're playing in. Okay. So I'm not going to go any further than that because it's really very, very simple. It's a control for sound. And as I said to you from the start, if you decide you want to go mental and turn everything down, this is what you actually end up with. La, 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 you end up enough. You, you really don't want that. Okay, so I'm going to pull my... My favorite back there's my you see the difference in the sound it's just beautiful it's nice and bright it's warm it's got a mellow tone and it's not offensive if you go and change one of these middle frequencies to that that is offensive um it's not a nice sound 
Okay, so I'm going to sign off. Short and sweet little tutorial with regards to the Master EQ. Leave me a comment if you've got something sensible to say. If you're going to sit and moan about how EQ should be set, I don't want to know. Please don't bother. Um, but if you've got a comment, maybe you're going to tell us that you've got a special set of speakers and you've got a different setting. Great, tell us. But well, that's all I want to know. Okay, so until next time, and uh, look after yourselves. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun making these, and I'm also enjoying the, the lovely feedback that you're leaving in comments. And, of course, you're subscribing to the channel, which is even better, because every time we post a video, you will get a notification to say there's something new to watch. Uh, but this is, I always keep saying it, this is the ultimate keyboard arranger uh, model that you can buy. Um, no two ways about it, and it's got a lot of control. So if you want to learn more about it, subscribe to the channel, and uh, until next time, take care.